Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Waldo and in this video we're going to be repairing the rusty frame on this truck. This is my 2005 GMC 2500 HD. I bought it at a salvage auction and it seems like I got a heckin' good deal. It has the highly desirable 6.6 .6 liter Duramax V8 diesel engine. Join me in my adventures as I bring this truck back to its former glory. This truck may look pretty on the outside and from a distance, but underneath it has some rust issues that need to be dealt with if this truck is going to last. In part one of this video series, I talked about how these trucks are largely bulletproof, except for the one Achilles heel, and that is rust and corrosion. These trucks, especially here in the Northeast, get a lot of rust on the frames and the body panels. In this video, we're going to deal with the frame part of it by ripping the bed off and repairing the frame. If you didn't see part one, you can see here that the bed is a little bit mangled from an accident and also quite rusty. So once I remove this bed, I am probably just going to discard it and replace it with a flat bed. Now to remove the bed, it's got eight bolts holding it in place. I also have to get the fuel filler neck. I have to remove the tail lights and the wiring harnesses for those inside of the bed. Inside the bed, I have to remove the chain attachment points for the gooseneck hitch. And then I also have to remove the wiring for the seven pin trailer connector over here on the side. Luckily, somebody already removed the bumper, so that makes my life quite a bit easier in that regard. 18 millimeter. Well, this one's coming off pretty easily. If they're all like this, I'm going to be super, super happy. Number one. Well, I was just about to say, these have been going really well. Everything's been really easy to get out until this one. The nut that is welded onto the bed of the truck, it broke off. So now it's just spinning around and I have to cut this bolt off. There we go, got it. For the fuel filler neck, you got three of these bolts. They look like seven millimeters. And then don't forget the ground strap down here. You got this thing right here. The cool thing about using these straps is that I can tighten them up to level it. Yeah, so here's a quick look at the frame. Um, there aren't really any major surprises in here. Looking at the fuel lines here, they actually look like they're in really good shape. We got this cross member here, which is usually the one that's all rotted out on the top here. And well, it definitely is a bit rusty. I don't know if it's rotted all the way through. So once I remove that rust, we'll see if it's still sound. And then this one here, of course, that's got a lot of rust on it, but no surprises. So yeah, everything looks pretty good. Look what I just found. Look at that. Looks like I have a spare key now.
So with the truck here in the shop, it's now time to start removing things from the rear end. So I have to remove the spare tire, the fuel tank, the gooseneck hitch, wiring, stuff like that. Get it out of here so that I can get in here and start removing rust. So when I go to reassemble this, it says gray, black, and blue on it, which is the color of these connectors. So I don't actually have to remember anything. That's nice. I found the tool to lower the spare tire and the date code on the spare tire here says it's from the 16th week of 2005. So this is also the original spare tire for the vehicle and well, it looks like it. Never been used. Probably only need one section here. So you got this end here, goes in and hooks over that. And then this goes over this. And then you can, that's tightening it. So you just spin it around and it lowers the spare. And look, it still works. On my uh, blue GMC, this thing was rusted out like crazy. I mean, it didn't even work. I had to replace it. That is a rusty wheel. That's heavy. I was thinking this thing was like held on by magic or something at that point. So for the process of getting rid of all this scaly rust, I bought a needle scaler. This is a high quality Chicago pneumatic needle scaler. Not to be confused with Central Pneumatic, which is a Harbor Freight brand. They also have Chicago Electric. It's almost as if they're trying to be confusing on purpose, but this is a high quality tool that should last a long time and should be able to handle quite a bit of abuse. Owner's manual. Ah, here it is. They also have one that has a pistol grip, but I figured this one gets into tighter spaces. So this is probably the right tool for this particular job. All right, let's see how this thing works. I'm also gonna try the air chisel on here to see how this does. This is pretty heavily scaled here. Yeah, you know, this thing actually does a much better job on this. I'll put a link to this in the description below and I'll also put a link to the needle scaler in the description as well. I think that is good for a different type of job, but when it comes to raw power that you need, yeah, this thing's the way to go. Oh, look at that. That is fantastic. Yeah, and you can see that there's, you know, there's bare steel under here. There's good solid steel. So I want to start with this cross member right here. And as I suspected, there's a lot of corrosion right under here. In fact, as you can see, it is all rusted out under here. The cross member also has some spots over on the other side that are getting pretty thin and there are a few holes because the metal is just rusted so much and it's so thin now. So I am going to replace this whole cross member with a new piece of metal. I'm gonna use this piece of two and a half inch Schedule 40 pipe. It is almost the exact same diameter as the cross member, except this pipe is a little bit thicker, but I don't think that's a bad thing. This has a little bit of surface rust on it, but that's just because it was sitting in my steel supplier's scrap pile. All 
All right, so this is what the cross member is approximately gonna look like. I still have to weld it together, but I have a bunch of segments here. These bends are about 17 degrees, so I made eight and a half degree cuts on each of the pieces. And uh, yeah, so now we gotta grind these down and weld it together. Well, there we go. That's a nice start for the cross member. Well, here we have the old cross member and the new cross member side by side. We've got the fuel tank mount right over there, and then over here is the shock mount. As for the exhaust hanger, I'm going to weld that on right around here, but I'll do that later once it's installed on the truck so I can get the position just right. Yeah, a little bit of a gap to fill here, but no worries, I'll get it done. So with this middle cross member all welded in, my attention is next moving up to this cross member up here by the cab. Now there's a really big hole here that's visible and I don't see any other issues with it, but I'm gonna remove this cross member, get a closer look at it, and then I can determine if I need to fabricate a whole new cross member or if I can just patch it. Each side of the cross member is just held on by one bolt and one rivet. Yeah, it looks like this is still pretty solid metal here, so I cut this at a good spot. I've been putting quite a bit of thought into what I want to do with this rear cross member here. And as you can see, it's mostly just the back of it that's all rusty. I was originally planning on just cutting out the rusty bits and then welding some new pieces in to strengthen it. However, since I removed most of the rust from this, I also noticed that there, there are some holes up on the top here and it's also pretty thin. And so replacing individual parts of it is becoming a bigger and bigger task and I'm kind of thinking just replacing the whole cross member is probably a good idea. But that raises the question, do I build it myself or do I see if I can purchase one on the internet? Well, that question was answered pretty easily when I found this. Now GM has discontinued this rear cross member as far as I can tell, but I found a company that makes these and sells them on the internet. And uh, it actually seems like it's probably stronger than the original cross member. 
it was for a pretty fair price, so I figured, well, let's just do it this way, and it'll make my life quite a bit easier. Although there is no doubt I could fabricate my own if I wanted to. Removing the cross member is pretty simple. It's just a matter of cutting these rivets and then it should just come right out. With this cross member gone, this gives me tons of space to get in here and do the next step, which is sandblasting. I'm going to be using coal slag as an abrasive media because it's cheap, I can get it locally, and it works pretty well. You can see how nice of a job this stuff does. That, however, is all I'm going to film because this is a really messy process and I'm indoors and my camera is too nice and expensive to get all messed up with sandblasting media. Eventually. Well, I got the frame of this all sandblasted and I even started spray painting it with some of this. It is a uh, Rust-Oleum semi-gloss enamel and this stuff is specially formulated to make the frame look good in a YouTube thumbnail. Beyond that, I don't expect it to provide any significant long-term protection from rust. Uh, that is going to be done by the oil undercoating that I'm going to apply at a later date. That's something that I do to my vehicles once a year, actually around this time of the year, in the fall. It's amazing what a little bit of paint can do to make this frame look good. When is a hammer ever not the correct answer? This cross member came with all the hardware I need to replace the rivets with good old fashioned bolts. I gotta weld this exhaust hanger on and I was kind of thinking maybe a little bit of stick welding is in order. Set this thing to stick. I got 8th inch 6011, that's what I'm using. And then for material, how about, we're somewhere in between 3 16 and a quarter inch, so about 95 amps. We'll see if I can strike an arc through this paint and also if I can weld this without it getting stuck because I really don't get a lot of practice doing stick welding. Oh yeah. It's not very visually appealing, but it should be strong enough. Upon closer inspection of the gooseneck hitch, once I removed all the old powder coating and the rust from it, I was able to determine that it's still structurally sound, 
and so that I can reuse it. That's really good news because these hitches generally have an MSRP of around $500 to $600. Click, click. There we go. That's not going anywhere. I also bought a new bumper pull hitch because, well, this truck didn't have one when I bought it. This is a class five hitch that can handle more weight than this truck can tow, and it only cost $240. Well, that's the hard part done. You may have noticed that I've only been focusing on the back half of this frame, and that's because the front half is in totally fine shape. It's just got some surface rust, but that's nothing major. All I did for the main frame rails on the back is just remove the loose rust, and that'll prevent water and salt and stuff from hanging out in all the little crevices. You saw that the cross members all needed to be replaced in the back. That was to be expected, but those are all in good shape. While I was filming this video, I was also ordering parts for the aluminum flatbed, which is going to happen. I just purchased some extruded aluminum decking for the flatbed, which is gonna make it light and really strong. So keep your eyes open for that. It may be a while before the video comes out because I still have to procure a lot of parts and I still have to do some designing, which is quite a bit of work, but it is going to be a really exciting build. Thank you so much for watching and we will catch you in the next one.